Hi everyone. So I've been asked to make my spaghetti sauce. Now my sauce is really very simple, but I do have certain things I do to it. Okay, so here we go. I'm just gonna put this tissue. It helps me uh, have a cleaner counter. So here we go. I'm gonna start off with some garlic, and I'm just going to um, put it straight into the can of tomato that I opened up, and I'm gonna pulse it with a hand blender. I'm just gonna clean this up and I'm gonna show you how I do it. Next time I'll have my garlic clean so I don't have to make you wait for it. Now, uh, sometimes I put meat and sometimes I don't. And when I say meat, I mean vegan meat. Either the meat that I make myself, if I don't have any ready, um, I do go down to get some uh, veggie meat. Actually, it's uh, mushroom meat from a place in the plateau area that we go to and I've already mentioned that place a few times and I could below in the description put a link where you could go get this meat and it's really really good meat so I'm just gonna dump this out now here's my can of tomatoes and I'm gonna take this garlic and I'm gonna put it straight in there and I'm just gonna pulse that garlic in there so instead of having to dice it or crush it, it's a lot easier. So I'm just gonna go in and pulse it. So I'm gonna do two cans. See why I have a paper? It just leaves my counter clean. Now usually I have beautiful organic tomatoes but this time around my husband found a huge special and he came home with the Italian Unico brand which is very thick and I'm gonna use this for now there we go now since this sauce is this can this type of tomato is so thick I'm going to put some water to thin it out, otherwise it's just way too thick. I do want to change my paper because I made a mess with all this tomato sauce on it. So I'll be right back. Okay, so here we go. So now I've got my tomato is all pulsed up and it has the garlic right in the tomato I pulsed it right in there so that's gonna make it a lot easier a lot of people don't like to feel that garlic under their teeth it doesn't bother me but it's just faster and it takes two minutes to do so I just go ahead and do it right into the can so now I'm gonna get my onion okay here we go look at this cutting board this cutting board's been around since I got married there's chunks of it missing but you know what best cutting board ever I didn't want to use it for a while, but you know what? I got very sentimental the other day, and I pulled it out again. And, yeah, so I'm using my old cutting board again. And you know what? A lot of people are worried about using the cutting board because they say a lot of stuff gets into the wood, and then it just causes bacteria. But you know what? If you give it a good wipe with... Uh, a uh, good strong like vinegar uh, it kills whatever is on it so don't worry about it I prefer using uh, a natural board rather than those plastic or those uh, other type of uh, cutting boards unless you've got marble then yes I would say go ahead and use that but a lot of those plastic cutting boards I really don't like using so I prefer using the wood and just giving it a good shot with some vinegar and let it soak in some vinegar when you get a chance and that's it it just kills everything plus I don't use any animal products now I did use animal products on this cutting board a long long time ago but it's been soaked and and cleaned so many times that it's I'm not worried about it okay so I'm gonna throw this right into my pot so I've got a little bit of olive oil I've got my onions and I'm going to show you what else I'm going to put in there. I'm just going to lower this for a second. So you don't have to listen to that buzzing. Okay, so most of you know that I do eat raw. So when I do use, uh, when I do use uh, or make portobello burgers, raw portobello burgers, 
I take the inside of the, um, the stem and the gills of the mushrooms and I remove it so when I do make my, uh, my burger, it's, it's got a nice little cup to it where I could fill it up with all kinds of goodies. But I do save all the gills and the butts of my, you see these are the gills and there's the butts that I cut up. Now, this is frozen, but if you ever notice a portobello mushroom, when you pull out that butt and you pull it apart, it shreds almost like meat. But I said I was going to do that for you one day, and I will. Let me just shut this off. So for now, I'm just going to show you how I make my sauce. I'm going to take all of this that I save in the uh, freezer. So when I need it, I just dump it right into my sauce, and it just adds a nice flavor to it. So I'm going to start cooking this up and I just want to get everything nice and golden, especially the mushrooms. You want those mushrooms to kind of just almost like shrink in size and it's just going to add all kinds of flavors to your sauce. Now it looks like I'll have a lot of uh, chunks of mushrooms in here because uh, if the mushroom is too big or too high. I kind of take off the rim of the mushroom, so that's why you see a lot of mushroom bits, a lot of big mushroom bits rather than just the gills. So one day I'll show you how I do it when I make a new burger for myself. But for now, I've got this and it's going straight into my sauce. So I'm just going to cook it up and then I'm going to add other ingredients to this. Okay, I'm going to put some Italian herbs, and this is just a mix of herbs that I have, and I'm just going to put about maybe a teaspoon for now, a teaspoon and a half, and if I want more, I'll add it later. Now what really would good, be good in this is my Italian vegan meatballs, but I don't have any ready, so my husband's going to have to do with what I have, right? Okay. You ready? About a teaspoon or two of maple. Some salt, I'd say about maybe a tablespoon, you could add less if you want, maybe half a tablespoon of salt, you could always add more later, a couple of leaves of sage, and that's sage from my garden that I hang and dry up. You see all those dark bits, and you're probably wondering, oh, your sauce is going to be so dark. No, my sauce is going to be beautiful. Now, if you have some fresh bay leaves, you can put one bay leaf in there, and... Uh, if you don't have fresh, you can use dry if you want. So we're just going to cook this up and we're just going to let everything just wilt down. And all that water that you see at the bottom has to evaporate. So I'll see you. Okay, just keep cooking it down. You want to remove the water from the base. If you need some extra oil, just go ahead and put some. We're going to put two pinches, or just one big pinch, I guess. One or two of uh, clove.
a small pinch of nutmeg. Mmm, smells so good. And we're going to put a pinch of baking soda. And you probably wonder why are you putting baking soda? Well, baking soda will um, remove the acidity of your tomato. So just let that break down. A nice little butt. And they just add a nice flavor to your sauce. And they taste good. Now, if you want to put more mushrooms, you can. You can put either oyster mushrooms in there. Or you can put uh, chunks of portobello if you want. So this is a good time to put it in because you could get it nice and brown. Okay, here we go. Oh, I missed one tomato, I will crush that. There's my other tomato. I will have to crush that one. I missed a piece of garlic. We're gonna get some water. Now, this is a very uh, thick sauce, so I won't be adding um, any sun-dried... Oh, sorry about that. Okay, since my sauce is nice and thick, I won't be adding any uh, sun-dried tomatoes. But if my sauce was a thin sauce, I would definitely be adding sun-dried tomatoes to my, uh, to my recipe. What I would normally do... Okay water I probably need more water let me see yeah a little more water okay like I said if my sauce was not as thick as this because this the unico is very thick tomatoes in the can if it was uh, less thick I would actually take some sun-dried tomatoes put it in the can after I threw my tomato into the pot I would put some sun-dried tomatoes in my can with some water and I would blitz it with a um, or in a blender and uh, make a fast little extra sauce to add to my tomato sauce that I'm making but since it's nice and thick I'm not going to be doing that now taste it for salt okay so now uh, since I have no meat ready I'm going to show you what that meat looks like this is the meat that we pick up at it's a uh, paradis and it's up in the plateau area and this is their shiitake uh, chicken if you taste how good this is oh my god I can't even tell you and when it goes into the sauce it just picks up the flavors and uh, it swells up and it feels like you're eating um, chicken pieces it is so so good now I didn't get a chance earlier because I didn't have my bag with me because these just came out of the freezer um, I'm just gonna put them in now because that's just as good I mean I wish you can taste these they're fantastic so I'm gonna be putting this as some meat so my husband could have some uh, but otherwise you don't have to put any meat the sauce is gonna be good the way it is uh, or if you do have some vegan meat 
you can put some of your own inside uh, if you have any made you could put some inside your sauce if you want or if you want to add maybe pieces of sausages you could also do that I've made my sauce uh, with chunks of sausages and they enjoy having that next to some pasta uh, I've made my meatballs and put them in there and they enjoy that so you could leave your sauce plain or you could leave your sauce um, or you could put some meat in your sauce so like I said I'm only making a small batch for now but this is really good and this is how I make mine and I'm gonna just add a little extra something and that's my Montreal steak spice You just need a little bit of it and it's really really good in the sauce and last but not least I put a little bit of pesto and if you want you could even do this at the end if you don't want to cook it into the sauce at the end when your sauce is done just put a nice little dollop of fresh pesto and I promise you your pasta and your sauce is just gonna be scrumptious so that's it guys so I hope you like this recipe and if you do, give me a thumbs up, share with your friends, leave me a comment, let us know what you do in your sauce and uh, I'll see you in the next one guys.